Hi, my name is Sue and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to make avo lemon soup. This is the very famous Greek egg lemon soup. And I want to show you today two methods for making the soup and two methods for making the avo lemon sauce. And you can decide which method, which of those methods you would like to use. Please remember that the recipes we're going to use today and all the recipes that we've ever used on this show can be found on our website, tweetin.com. Agua lemon soup is traditionally made with a chicken soup base. So the very first thing that you need to do is make chicken soup. Now, you can make chicken soup from scratch the traditional way. And to do that, you need the following ingredients. The first thing you need is a whole chicken. You need some celery, you need an onion, you need about two carrots. For flavoring, you need a little bit of allspice, bay leaf, of course salt and pepper. You need rice, white long grain rice, and for the avo lemon oil, you need eggs and lemon. Now, to make soup the old-fashioned way, you take your chicken, and you have to have a big soup pot. You put it in your soup pot. Add about eight cups of water, two stalks of celery that are chunked up, an onion that's been chunked up, two peeled whole carrots, a little bit of allspice, bay leaf, some salt. Put it on the stove, let it cook for two hours. Now that's the old-fashioned way, but I'm going to show you a simpler, easier way that comes out with a very good result, and it's for you when you're uh, trying to rush a little bit or you're just not in the mood to play around with chicken bones and chicken skin. So let's work on this easier soup. First thing you're going to need for this easy soup is two whole carrots and you need to peel them and then chop them up finely for the soup. Now you want to cut all your vegetables, the onion, the carrots, the celery, into fairly small dice. Avo lemon soup is not a chunky soup. It does have vegetables, it can have vegetables, but not big chunks of vegetables. So you want to have your pieces of vegetable fairly small, like this. That's just perfect. Okay, carrots are all done. In addition to the two peeled and chopped carrots. For this easier soup, you'll need one celery stalk also chopped fairly finely. It's a staple of the Greek family. I know it's very impressive in restaurants, but it's also just a down-home type food. So now we have a stalk of celery chopped. And the last bit of chopping is an onion. Now if this were a normal size onion, I'd say chop half an onion, but you can see this, this baby is gargantuan, so I think I might uh, chop a third of it instead of a half of it. See if I can figure that out. Now the reason we're using a smaller amount of vegetables with this easy soup is because of the prepared broth we're going to use. If we were using the vegetables with the traditional soup, we'd want more because they would flavor the broth that was going to be made. But our broth is already well flavored. Again, fairly small dice. And 
that's it for the chopping. To the chopped vegetables, add approximately eight cups of prepared chicken broth. Now I'm using this. It comes in these nice boxes. It's all ready. And it's quite good. So eight cups of chicken broth. The vegetables. Now you need some flavorings. You need about a teaspoon of salt. Not too much because their broth is already seasoned. You need some pepper. You need to add a fourth teaspoon of allspice. because I think allspice at really makes a difference in any kind of chicken soup. And one bay leaf. Now I want to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a tea ball because I don't want to fish out the bay leaf. And in my tea ball I'm going to put my one bay leaf. Just going to kind of crumble it up a bit. I'm going to use whole allspice because the flavor lasts longer. I get about six of them. I can't count. Okay, six of them. Put them in my tea ball. And rather than sprinkling ground pepper into the pot, I'm just going to use a nice handful of whole pepper stick it into the tea ball, close it up, and drop it into my pot so that when the chicken stock and the vegetables are done cooking, all I have to do is just find this thing and remove it. And the stock has been perfectly flavored with pepper, allspice, and bay leaf. So in it goes. Now I've got everything in the pot. I've got the chicken broth, I've got the chopped vegetables, I've got all the seasonings. So the only thing left to do is actually get this stuff heated up, get it cooking. So it's time to put it on the stove. Bring this to a boil. Now the broth and vegetables and flavorings have come to a boil. So I'm going to turn the heat down to a simmer and let this simmer. Of course, I'm going to take it off the heat for a second so it doesn't boil over. Let this simmer for 20 minutes because I am going to add some chicken to this soup. While the soup is cooking, let's talk about the chicken. Now this is optional. You can use chicken meat if you like, or you can leave the soup with just the vegetables and the chicken broth. What you'll need is anywhere from a half pound to a pound of boneless, skinless, either chicken breasts or chicken thighs, whatever you prefer. Today I have chicken breasts, and all I'm going to do right now is just rinse them off, dry them, and get ready to put them in the soup. So the soup part has cooked for 20 minutes and I'm just going to plop in my one pound of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And again, you could use chicken thighs if you like. Because these are cool, I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit and let it cook for anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes until the chicken is just done. It's been 10 minutes. I turned the heat up a little bit more because the chicken was cold and I needed to get it simmering. Now all I'm going to do is just remove the chicken pieces. I have left them whole. I'm going to remove them 
put them on a plate, cook the rice, and cut them up after they've cooled a little. Now I'm going to add the rice. You could add anywhere from a half cup to a full cup of rice, just depending on how much stuff you wanted in your soup. I'm going to use a full cup, and it should be white rice, and it should be long grain rice. That is traditional for avalemino soup. So I'm just going to measure out a cup of white rice and plop it into the, into the stock pot. Bring the heat up a little so that it comes to a boil. The stock is bubbling, so I'm just going to turn the heat down a bit, leave it in on a simmer, and then let the rice cook for about 15-20 minutes, and then I'm going to check it just to make sure it is completely cooked. Now the rice has been cooking about 10 minutes, and the chicken has been cooling for about 10 minutes. So it's about cool enough for me to handle. Now I'm just going to start chopping it up. I don't want really big chunks of chicken, so I want to cut it into just really small bite-sized pieces like, like this. As you're cutting up, if you run across gristle or pieces of fat like this, just set them aside. Don't stick them in the soup. If your chicken is still a little pink, that's okay. Go ahead and cut it up because you're putting it back in the soup and it will cook some more in the soup. I'm almost done here and rice has a few more minutes before it's going to be cooked. So I have enough time to wash my hands, wash off my cutting board, and get ready for the next step. It's been 15 minutes. I'm going to check to make sure that the rice is cooked. It doesn't have to be super soft, just cooked all the way through. Mmm, that's just fine. The rice does not need to be overcooked. The thing is, it's going to stay in this hot stock for a few more minutes, and it will continue to absorb liquid. So don't overcook it to start with. This is just fine. Now I'm going to add all the chicken meat that I cut up. Put it back into the pot. And right now, what we have is nice chicken soup. Because I used a full pound of chicken, there's a lot of chicken pieces, and because I used a full cup of rice, there's a lot of rice. So it is a pretty thick hearty soup, but that's all it is. It's chicken soup. It is not avalemino soup. So now I want to show you two different methods for turning this basic chicken soup into the Greek avalemino. The first thing I want to do is give you a hint. If you're thinking that you might want to serve avalemino soup and you're going to serve it to guests who are arriving, you might want to make this particular version that is a more stable soup. It can be kept, it can be reheated, it can be kept on a low heat without any danger of the eggs curdling. So at this point, after you've done the chicken soup, you've done the chicken, you've done the rice, you can add two tablespoons of a quick mixing, quick dissolving flour product like the Wondra to about a third of a cup of water or chicken broth if you have some extra. Just add it, mix it up, and it's great because it does mix instantly and you don't have to worry about lumps. And then just add this to your hot chicken soup. It will thicken it slightly, not a whole lot, but it will thicken it slightly, which will give it a more stable base for the avalemino. And if you want this thick, creamy, stable avalemino, then you want to use the first avalemino sauce that I'm going to tell you about. And remember, all this information can be found on our website. At this point, 
I'm going to remove my t-ball. I don't need it. And it's really easy to find and really easy to retrieve. Now keep the soup hot, still cooking a little bit, on a relatively low heat. You need the juice of two lemons. Sure to get as much juice out as possible. And be sure to, whatever method you're using for juicing the lemons, be sure that you remove all the seeds. You don't want to get any seeds in the soup. If you wanted, you could strain this into something else just to make sure there are no seeds. You want to add one to two tablespoons of the quick mixing flour, something like Wondra, and just mix it well with the lemon juice. And it'll be lump free because this flour mixes quickly and instantly. I just set that aside. And now, here comes the au bois section. You want two eggs beaten and well beaten. Beat them until they're light and fluffy. Now all you need to do is really incorporate about two cups. But I'm always a little bit on the nervous side, so I incorporate a little bit more just to make sure I don't run into any danger of the eggs curdling. Okay, that's just about right. The only thing left to do is now put this back in. And it's the same kind of technique. I'm going to pour this back into the soup ladle full by ladle full while I'm stirring. There, that way there'll be no shock to the soup system or to the egg system. Everybody will be happy. And you just keep this, you can keep this soup on a low heat. If you didn't use the flour in the soup stock, you would really want to remove it from the heat. And this is our first avo lemono soup recipe. The eggs will thicken the soup slightly, and then you have that instant flour which will thicken the soup slightly. And what you'll have is a nice velvety textured, thick, creamy chicken soup with a hint of lemon. That's avo lemono number one. Now I want to show you avo lemono number two, which is the traditional Greek method. It's slightly different. It's kind of interesting. It's one of those things where you have to serve it immediately. So everybody has to be kind of at the table, ready to go with their soup spoons. Let's get working on that one. Now this is the more traditional method of avo lemono, but it's one that has to be served immediately and to reheat it, it has to be reheated quite, quite slowly and gently. It doesn't keep, it's not as stable, but this is the traditional method. And it calls for two eggs also, but the difference is these eggs have to be separated. So you want to separate out the yolks from the egg whites and place the egg whites in a large bowl because they're going to be beaten they will expand and get quite fluffy. Now you want to use an electric mixer or I suppose you could use a hand mixer and you want to get these eggs beaten well, egg whites beaten well until they're stiff. Now those look about right. You can see how they hold their peaks. That's just fine. Now the next thing, we need the same amount of lemons, same amount of lemon juice, the juice of two lemons. Now I want to add the lemon juice to the egg yolks and beat these well.
that's just fine. The next step is to incorporate the egg yolk lemon mixture into the beaten egg whites. And I'm just going to fold the egg yolk mixture into the stiffly beaten egg whites gently. I want to keep some of the shape of the egg whites. What this produces is a frothy soup. The soup does not thicken as much. It may thicken slightly, but it has a nice brothy texture and it has this nice egg white froth on it. It's just an interesting texture. It's an interesting uh, approach to soup and it is traditional. It is traditionally the way aqua lemon soup is made. This is something that would be done at the last minute while the family is seated. You get this part done and then you rush the soup pot over to the table and start serving. Alright, that's the last of the egg yolk. And now we're ready to do the very same thing we did with the other olive oil lemon oil recipe, the magic of combining the raw eggs mixture with the hot soup. For this particular recipe and method, you do need to make sure that the soup is turned off, that it's not uh, on the burner anymore. And it's the same idea, hot broth into soup or into egg, whisking gently pouring slowly because you want to keep the frothy texture if possible. Try for incorporating at least two cups, three cups of broth. Now this is the soup my mother and my grandmother would make. It was foamy and frothy. And this is the method that they use for making uh, abu lemon o lamb stew, too. Okay, I think I've got about two cups of broth in there. And now I'm just going to pour this back in, the same idea. Pour it back in slowly. Because I don't want to break up too much of the fluffy egg whites. Either one is just going to be delicious. You pick the one that meets your needs, that suits what you want to do in the kitchen, but please try it. You'll love it.